our Advent, Advent Reflection tonight is going to be about Jesus, the Lamb of God. And the verse is we're going to read is John 1, verse 29. And it says, The next day John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. And uh, it's an interesting thing, isn't it? Why would he refer to Jesus as being the Lamb of God? Well, well, I guess one of the reasons is because what John's doing is reminding us of something that happened way back in the book of Exodus, the second book of the Bible, where we can read in chapter 12 how the Israelites were slaves in Egypt and how God raised up Moses to rescue them and sent these plagues to convince Pharaoh to let the people of Israel go and he wouldn't do it. And then the tenth plague that we read about is the one that uh, uh, is the plague of the firstborn. And Moses tells the people of Israel that they are to sacrifice a lamb, a lamb for every household. Uh, and then take the blood of the lamb and paint it on the doorposts of their house. And then that night when the angel of death or the destroyer uh, passes over their household, he'll leave the Israelites alone, um, whereas the Egyptians, unfortunately, uh, the firstborn in those houses were killed. And so because the angel of death passed over their houses, we have this festival of the Passover. Uh, and the lamb that they sacrificed is the Passover lamb. And the Jews themselves then celebrated that every year as a reminder of that event when they were set free from... Uh, being slaves in Egypt and of course what John's doing is pointing out the fact that really that that lamb that was sacrificed was just a, a one for one event just to to free them out of Egypt but the whole point of uh, the, the big issue of sin wasn't really addressed at all and this was still a barrier between God's people and God himself and so when he describes here comes Jesus the lamb of God he is the one who's actually going to deal with this issue of sin once and for all and that's what you're doing I think yeah, and it's just incredible when you think about the plan, you know, that um, these once one-off things hadn't worked, but such was God's love for us and such was Jesus' love for us that they wanted to be back in relationship with us, uh, be in relationship with us uh, once and for all, so we had complete access to him. They had this plan whereby Jesus would come and he would be the lamb that would be sacrificed once and for all. And it's just incredible to think of the Father's love for us and Jesus' love for us that he would be prepared to think about and do that. I think about when our girls were younger sometimes and, you know, they'd have a, a fallout in the playground or they'd fall over and it'd, you know, be the end of the world or even when they got older, there'd be, you know, really difficult things they'd have to go through and they'd be really upset. Mm. As a parent, all you wanted to do was just to try and make it right for them and to make them happy again, to um, at least enable them to get through it. And it was quite painful sometimes to watch mm. them having to go through it, knowing that we couldn't make it any different or any better immediately. They had to go through it. And if that's what it was like for us, worrying about our daughters, um, what must it be like for Father God to know that he was agreeing for his son to come as a baby, vulnerable um, to everything he was going to have to go through, all through his childhood and adolescence and adulthood, and finally to end up sacrificed as the Lamb of God for our sin. Such incredible love that he's prepared to do that. And, and even Jesus as well, we read in Isaiah 53 verse 7, that he was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. And Jesus, you know, he was the Son of God. He could have, you know, of all people, he should not have been there. He could have, you know, spoke about his rights and, you know, spoke up against it, but he didn't. He was committed and humble and just determined to go through this plan mm. so that we could come back into relationship with him. It's just incredible love. It is, it is, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. It is incredible. And and, and the second part of, of that phrase that John uses is that Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And that, that pain that you just described and, and that what it must have been like for God is incredible. As one side, if you like, of the equation. The other side is that actually in doing this, what Jesus has done is taken away the sin of the world, which is an amazing thing when you think about it. And, you know, as Christians, we live in the good of that. But... But if you just stop for a moment and think, what does that really mean? Because obviously, you know, sin is all around us still, let's be honest. You know, sin is, you know, in the world it's around us, we're affected by it. We often sin ourselves still, you know, in that sense, it hasn't gone, it hasn't been taken away. So what does it mean? And I think we haven't got time, but I guess the New Testament has got loads of things that actually help us understand what that does mean. A couple of things that I can think of is that, you know, if we confess our sins, then... God is faithful and he'll forgive us our sins and that is an amazing thing that's a fantastic thing uh, you know we're no longer judged by God we're actually forgiven by him and that's a that's an incredible thing and, and and I guess one of the other things is also 
you know, because Jesus has taken away the sin of the world, nothing can separate us from God's love. I mean, that's a great thing. Nothing, absolutely nothing, can separate us from the love of God now, which is great. I think also, of course, he takes away the sin of the world in respect of it loses power and control over us. So, you know, we may feel that um, tempted to do something, to make an unwise decision, to go for something we really don't, it wouldn't help us. But in Jesus, um, you know, there is a way out. He promises he'll give us a way out. So he doesn't have to have that power and control over us. He may be either worried or anxious about something. Um, and we could just you know, go down that route. But in Jesus, there is peace. In Jesus, he says, you know, mm. do not be anxious for anything. So the control and the, the power of sin that we should wreck our lives is broken. Mm. And we can, in Jesus, find freedom. Whatever the circumstance, in, in illness, uh, we can find healing. And we can find peace. We have a hope. So many ways in which we are free to live our lives out of the control of sin. Mm. Yeah, that's right. This, this is great, isn't it? And I think, you know, one of the other things is it also leads us to how we want to... Uh, help other people uh, and work, you know, outside of the church in that sense, uh, and sort of see how uh, Jesus can make a difference there. You know, we sing that song, don't we? We speak Jesus and uh, Jesus' name yeah, into those things. It's great. Okay, well, thanks. So we uh, let's just pray, shall we? All right, as we end this, we're going to pray. Lord Jesus, we want to thank you that you are indeed the Lamb of God. We want to thank you, Lord, that you are the one who's come who's taken away the sin of the world. Thank you, Lord, personally, for each one of us. You've taken away our sin. I want to pray, help us day by day to live in the good of that, not just for ourselves, but for the benefit of those around us, Lord. I want to pray, Lord Jesus, that you would do that. Thank you. You know, as we read in Revelation, they sing, worthy is the Lamb. And Lord, we want to say today, this Christmas, Jesus, you are truly worthy. Amen. Thanks for watching and have a great Christmas.